والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام الساعة أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is one and has no partner and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his messenger after whom there is no more messenger to come his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the hour is established. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, Ramadan has gotten even a little bit closer. So in about 10 days, we will begin this blessed month. And what I would like to share with you today are some thoughts and ideas regarding Another objective of fasting, we talked about the development of taqwa, which is a higher consciousness and level of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in itself must affect the actions and the behavior of the individual. For taqwa is not just a theoretical concept and awareness in the mind and that's it, but it must also result in the effects being seen that consciousness in the mind should be visible or should become visible in the actions in the behavior of the individual now prior to this discussion on fasting in Ramadan we talked about the Isra and Mi'raj and I'm not going to go over the whole thing just one little point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra in the very first ayah, he tells us the reason for this journey. He tells us why he took the Prophet والسلام, on this journey. And that is, Allah says, لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا In order that we may show him some of our signs. Show him meaning so that he can see for himself these signs. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have revealed the Qur'an to the Prophet at that point in time to console his heart and mind after all the tragedies that he faced, personal and otherwise. Yet Allah took him on this journey. He didn't just re reveal Qur'an. At that time we said, as the scholars have mentioned, the reason for this is that seeing something with your own eyes is very different from being told about it, although you may believe if you're told about it. But seeing something with your own eyes, in other words, experiencing something your own self, firsthand, is a very different experience than being told about it. And so in fasting in Ramadan, brothers and sisters, there is, we, are, we have the opportunity to experience First hand ourselves how many people in our world today in our even our own city today who are less fortunate we have a chance to experience a little bit of what they experience perhaps as a lifestyle when we fast we abstain from eating and drinking for the daylight hours generally we're missing lunch and maybe some snacks in between. That's all. Because in the morning at suhoor time we eat, and at iftar time we eat again. So really all we're missing is that lunch in the middle of the day, and maybe some snacks here and there, and some drinking. Yet, this is enough to cause us to feel hungry and thirsty. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to experience, brothers and sisters, is not just to go through physical thirst and hunger, but for us to go a step further, that while we experience this hunger and thirst, although it's very limited, it should lead us to understand how other people in the world, how they feel when they are not just missing one meal and a few snacks in between, but they're starving. Some people, as we know well, brothers and sisters, they don't even have a choice of when they will eat, let alone what they want to eat. MashaAllah, we have choices. 
in the mornings we choose, well, you know, I had that yesterday, I want something different today. I'm sure if you have kids, you see this all the time. They will not eat cereal every morning. They, even if they like the cereal, eventually they'll want something else. We have choices. But there are people who don't have a choice of when to eat, let alone what they should eat. And so the objective behind this is to allow us to experience ourselves firsthand so that we will be moved to doing something about it. See, the objective is for us to do something about it. But if you cannot relate with the issue, chances are you will not be motivated to help or to help as much as you possibly can. So, to help us relate with this concept or with this feeling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited eating and drinking. We talked about one aspect of not eating and drinking, which is weakening the desires, teaching us self-control. But this is another objective of <coughs> abstaining from food and drink. <coughs> Allah wants us to help those who are less fortunate, to care about them, to share with them. But notice, brothers and sisters, He just didn't order us to share with them. He has given us this mechanism, as we say, to allow us to experience, to some extent, firsthand, how they feel on a regular basis. We don't feel this way all the time, only in Ramadan, when we fast. And the objective behind this is to give us that firsthand experience, that eyewitness account, as we say. It is not the same as being told about it. Someone can tell us as much as they want how a hungry person feels. But unless you and I, brothers and sisters, become hungry ourselves, we will not truly be able to understand those feelings. And this is what Allah has given to us in Ramadan while, while we fast. And so the hope is we will experience this, we will understand it, and now we're in a better position to be motivated and inspired to do something about it, to help them. In this vein, by the way, there's a brother from Masjid Toronto here, Brother Zia, who has started a project, I believe this is the third or fourth year for it. Uh, it's a dollar a day pledge. And you can uh, go online and you can uh, uh, donate a dollar a day towards the eradication of, of hunger in our society. Alhamdulillah, over these few years, he has managed to open up, as we say, chapters in various cities across Canada, where not only Muslims, but even non-Muslims have um, uh, embraced this band working, where for every day of fasting, you, you give something in, in, in charity. So please, uh, if you contact Brother Zia or the office, they can give you more information about it, right? So do something about it, not just feel the feelings, but the objective is not just for us to experience the feelings. The real objective is for us to do something about it. But experiencing the feelings is the gateway towards doing something about it. Another objective of avoiding eating and drinking while we fast is to allow us the opportunity, brothers and sisters, to, to recognize and appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you don't eat that one meal, or you don't drink when you feel thirsty in the afternoon. You, we are to begin to recognize and appreciate the blessings of Allah. The blessings that we could eat if we wanted to, we have access to food, and that we have water to drink. We should become appreciative, not just recognize, but appreciate. Of course, in order to appreciate, in terms of giving thanks and expressing gratitude, you have to first of all recognize. So step one is to recognize and then hopefully the, the, the automatic step after that is to give thanks, to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his, for his blessings that we enjoy every day, that we may take for granted, but many people in the millions don't have clean drinking water. Alhamdulillah, in our city today, you can open the tap in your home and drink the water. In many parts of the world, people cannot do that. People have to even walk miles to fetch water. In our homes, we turn it on, the water is there. With all the pressure you want in the world. But there are places where people have to trek a mile or two or three 
just to fetch the water that they're going to use for that day. You use it up, you have to walk back and get more. So we need to begin seriously, brothers and sisters, to recognize and appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is though, how do we appreciate the blessings of Allah? There are various ways of doing this. Perhaps the most obvious and easiest is to say Alhamdulillah. When you recognize Allah's blessings on you, say Alhamdulillah on the spot. But that is not enough, brothers and sisters. That is not enough. It is important, yes, but it is not enough. It is important that we also share what we have with others. This is another form of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our society today, we talk about paying back to society, or paying it forward. I've read in the newspapers of the people who, they go to uh, you know, one of these uh, coffee houses like uh, Tim Hortons, and they would just say to the, to, to the, to the, the cashier, look, here is $25, you know, give some people some free coffee. They are paying it forward as they say. But this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exhorted us to do when he said in Surah Al-Hashr, وَالْتَنْذُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Let every soul carefully look at what it's sending forth for tomorrow. What you're paying forward for yourselves. By helping others. By helping others. That's how we send forth for ourselves, brothers and sisters. See, the interesting thing is, in, in the material world, or from the material perspective, the wealth that a person has might be considered the wealth he or she holds on to. Anything you spend, whether you buy something for yourself or you give away, according to the math, you've lost that. It's gone. It's done with. But brothers and sisters, in the Islamic perspective, we have a very different perspective, a very different view of looking at this issue. Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrates a hadith in his Sahih in which the Prophet والسلام, once asked the Sahaba, he said to them, Ayyukum, mal warithihi ahabbu ilayhi min mali. Which one of you loves the wealth of his inheritors more than his own wealth? And the Sahaba, they said to him, O Messenger of Allah, ma minna min ahad, there is no one amongst us except his own wealth, the wealth you have worked for and acquired, except that his own wealth is dearer to him than the wealth of his inheritors. And then the Prophet said to them, Ma anfaqta fa huwa man, wa ma amsakta. What you spend, what you give away, logically, we're told logically that you, you, you're losing it. Islam teaches us, brothers and sisters, no, you're not losing it. Actually, that's what you're gaining from. Because the Prophet says, what you spend, that is in good causes, that is your wealth. Whatever you hold on to, in terms of savings in the bank and whatever else, it is, the, it is the wealth of your inheritance. Because one day you'll die and leave it behind, who will get it? They will get it. Your children and parents and you know, the, the what of them? The inheritors, the heirs. So this is an amazing perspective that the Prophet ﷺ provides. That giving is what you are sending forward. You're paying forward for yourself. That's what you will benefit from. Not what you hold on to. So, Sharing with others and a very important way of also expressing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet, السلام, everything he got, he shared with the Sahaba. Anything he got, he didn't eat it himself, he would share. In the battle of Al Ahzab, while they were digging the trench, Ghazwatu Khandaq, one of the Sahaba, his wife, sent their little daughter with a handful of dates. All they had at home was a handful of dates. And she, she told the little girl, listen, go quiet and give this to your dad. You know, it's just a handful, maybe five, four or five dates, a little girl. But when this girl took it to her father and he received it, 
He didn't think, you know, it's just five dates. I mean, we're like 3,000 people here. What would five dates be? 3,000 people? Even one person, that may barely be enough. But the Sahabi, the Allah, he went to the Prophet ﷺ with the dates. He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, here is a handful of dates that my wife sent. And the Prophet ﷺ covered it and he made dua and asked Allah to bless their food. And then the companions came and they all ate their fill of dates. And in the end, the five dates were still there. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, did not hoard anything. One time, he went in for salah. Just before the takbir to begin the prayer, he just rushed out of the masjid. This is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. And the sahabas were a bit apprehensive because for the Messenger of Allah to be about to pray with them and then just rush out of the masjid, it must be something serious. And a short while after, the Prophet ﷺ returned and he prayed and he told them afterwards. He said, just as I was about to pray, I remembered some gold, some sadaqah someone had given to him. And he had it at home. He said, I did not want it to remain any longer in my home without giving it to those who deserve it. So share with others. The third thing, brothers and sisters, in terms of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to look at how we use these blessings. How we use them. So if we use them without abusing in terms of extravagance and waste, this is an expression of gratitude. If, however, a person wastes and is extravagant, this is actually an expression of ingratitude. It is as if the person is saying, Oh Lord, I don't really care about your blessings. I don't value them. But when you use with the consciousness of not wasting and being extravagant and abusing it, the attitude is, Oh Lord, I appreciate your blessings. I value them. And so in our lives, brothers and sisters, I know these days there is a lot of talk in the white, in, in, in globally actually, about the issue of global warming, about the issue of greenhouse gases, about the limited or finite resources on the earth, and that if we don't take care of the earth, our own survival as a species is threatened. But fasting in Ramadan should also awaken us to our roles or our role as, as we say, stewards of the environment of our world. We may not be able to stop vehicles from, you know, emitting greenhouse gases. But Allah the Exalted, brothers and sisters, will not hold us accountable for the things we have no control over. But He will ask us about the things we do have control over, even if they seem small and insignificant. So every day in our lives, at home, at work, in the masjid, with our children, with our families, talk with them and brainstorm with them about ways of beginning to use and not abuse. My father always tells us this. You should use but do not abuse. Because in how you use the blessings of Allah, you either are expressing gratitude and thanks or you're showing ungratefulness and ingratitude. So when you brush your teeth, for example, when you shower, when you perform wudu, when you perform wudu, and you have to wipe your head, for example, you don't need to leave the tap running at the time you're wiping your hair. You can catch some water in your hand, turn off the tap, wet your hands, wipe your head, and the few seconds it takes you to do that, that water you're saving. Now one may say, hey, what's the big deal? You know, it's half a cup of water. But brothers and sisters, it's a half a cup that you have not wasted. And tomorrow another half a cup. And the next day another half a cup. Or each time you perform wudu half a cup. It adds up. It adds up. In certain situations that same half a cup of water could mean the difference between life and death. So it's not about how much. It's about doing what the best you can to, to, to conserve in the, in the, in the, in the, on the basis of expressing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not saying be miserly. Alright? Don't use this as an excuse for being cheap, as they say. Or miserly. But we need to really 
watch the things we do every day. You know, electricity, leaving lights on, turning the power on when you're not using it. Right? These are things you can teach your kids at home and you can implement in your own home. Uh, you know, changing the light bulbs. You've heard this from Enbridge Gas and uh, uh, Hydro One and so on. You know, change your, uh, your bulbs at home to energy saving bulbs to cut down on your, on your uh, costs. Right? Uh, to save on energy, the, your use of energy. These are all Islamic concepts and ideas, brothers and sisters. Because what we're doing is we are showing gratitude and appreciation to Allah the Exalted for the blessings He has blessed us with. Think of the people who don't have electricity. Think of the countries in the world where they may get two hours a day of electricity and 22 hours a day of blackout. Some of you may have come from such countries or may have visited such countries where it's very tough to, to put things in your freezer. It's hard because mostly you don't get electricity. Mostly you experience blackouts. Think of those people. And then we will begin to understand the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us in the Quran that whether we experience and enjoy His blessings or He takes them away, they're all tests for us. So we should not become complacent into thinking that what we have can't, can't, can't be finished. It can end. It can be depleted. It can be taken away at any time. Then what will we do then? So fasting, brothers and sisters, allows us to understand and to appreciate and to recognize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to show gratitude. I mean, the objective is we should recognize them so that we can become grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah says in verse 185. Read the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you. He does not want hardships. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ And that you may fulfill the, the, the appointed days of fasting. And that you should exalt Allah. Part of the exaltation is praising and giving thanks. And that you should exalt Allah. To Allah ala ma hadakum for the guidance He has given you. tashkurun. And that perhaps you will give thanks. This is why He is to the fasting. That we would recognize His blessings and be grateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those who are grateful and thankful to Him for His infinite grace and blessings and mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to recognize His blessings. And may Allah help us to ever be grateful and thankful to Him for His blessings. And may He continue to bless us with His blessings and not take it away from us. May He cause us to be among those who are deserving of His blessings and not to be among those who are not deserving of His blessings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.